Well, a very good evening, everyone. Welcome to Racism in Sport and Society Moving Forward. This is part of the University of Aberdeen's celebration of Black History Month. Other events this month include talks, discussions, outdoor uh, author readings, panel discussions, blogs, vlogs, playlists and podcasts, with the national theme for the UK-wide month-long initiative being Dig Deeper, Look Closer, Think Bigger. I'm Dave McDermott and it's my pleasure to chair this evening's event. This evening's discussion will have two parts to it. First, the problem, racism in sport and society and why this is an issue. And then, more importantly, the solution moving forward. What are some of the ways to tackle racism in sport? What actions can we take as citizens to address racism in sport as well as the wider society? Also a reminder that audience members can use the Q&A function on screen to ask a question for later in the event, which is scheduled to last about an hour. I'd like now to introduce our two speakers tonight. Jed Grevy is the Chief Exec and Founder of Show Racism, the Red Card, the UK's leading anti-racism educational charity, providing educational workshops, training sessions, multimedia packages, and a whole host of other resources, all with the purpose of tackling racism in society. Established in 1996, the organisation utilises the high profile status of football and football players to publicise its message. Away from work, Jed enjoys squash, five-a-side, tennis, cycling, skiing, golf and hill walking. And he's also a lifelong Newcastle United supporter. And of course, United's former Aberdeen winger Ryan Fraser was the Scotland goal hero last night with the win at Hamden. Our other speaker is Aberdeen's Belgian-born midfielder, Funso King Ojo. Funso joined the Dons from Scunthorpe in the summer of 2019, but began his senior career with PSV in the Netherlands. He's also been capped by Belgium at under 15, under 16, under 17, under 20 and under 21 levels. So without further ado, to kick things off, I'd like to ask Jay how things have changed since Show Racism the Red Card was formed all those years ago. Um. The well, Sewer Summary Card, as you, as you said, Dave, was established in 1996. And um, at that particular time, um, certainly I think there'd been big progress in society. We'd, I'm, I'm a Newcastle fan. In the 1980s and 1970s, racism was rife in, in UK football. Um, we had the far right at the time, the National Front, out selling outside the football grounds and recruiting um, from football. We had monkey chants in the grounds. We had bananas on the pitch. Um, and it was the probably w the worst aspect of racism was in the game itself. And as a result of the actions of fans, of campaigns like Show Racism Red Card and of the players' actions, um, I think we had 15 years of progress. Um, and, you know, when, when Show Racism Red Card established in 96, we, we saw a lot of progress, in, not only within the game, but within society as a whole. Um, but I think what you've seen in the last 10 years, and this is society's problem, it's not football's, um, is the blaming of immigrants, um, the demonization of migrants, labor, um, Muslims being blamed um, for uh, the crimes of, of society, and um, Muslims being blamed as terrorists, and generally a rise in racism over the last 10 years, which is reflected uh, in hate crime statistics just out this, this week, um, which have gone up in the last six years, um, year on year, and are now 104,000 reported hate crimes uh, to the police. So um, it's a problem of society, um, and it's a problem that's getting worse because we've not addressed the issues of um, immigration and we've not addressed the issues of Islamophobia. Um, and yet um, we're in a pandemic, and, and we know that, Migrants help run our society. Migrants help run the NHS, um, and we're still blaming immigrants and migrants. So we, we, it's much more society's problem than football. And I think um, that's what I, I, where I see the problem. And Jed, I suppose in certain parts of Scotland, thankfully not not the northeast, but there's also sectarianism, which is also a huge problem. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's certainly uh, a, a massive problem in Scottish football. Um, and uh, I, I think it's, it's blighted the game for a, a long, long time. So, um, you know, we, we would de define racism um, is be, uh, you can get racism because of your skin colour, your nationality, your religion um, or, your, your, or, or your culture. And certainly sectarianism falls into the religion side of that. And it, it, it has blighted Scottish football in particular. 
And so from your own experiences, you've played in the Netherlands and England, and of course here in Scotland, what are your thoughts of, on racism in football? Um, it's, it's, still, it's still there. Obviously what um, Chad said in the 90s and before that, it was, it was way worse. Um, but it's, it's still there and it's, it's more online now than it happens in, this, in the stadiums. So you, you hear more, you see more because we, we get a lot of messages from people we don't know. And even though you, you might say, I don't read them or you, you read most of them. And there's always players who, who get some messages. I've, I've been lucky enough to not have that many bad experiences. So I've, I've, I've been lucky, but I know plenty of players who are constantly um, being messaged with messages they shouldn't be getting. Jed, you guys do an awful lot of work through the schools. Is that, is that key to moving things forward? Yes, yeah, Sydney, as an educational charity, we've, uh, we use the high profile status of football um, to combat racism in society. And, um, we're about changing attitudes. Now, we don't think that anybody's attitudes, we, sorry, we believe anybody's attitudes can be changed, but undoubtedly, um, the last year of primary school is where we can have our biggest influence. Um, it's also where footballers can have their biggest influence and, and other role models. So we're, we're delighted of the support we have in not just in Scottish football, but in um, of some of the greatest players in the world, um, but also of other role models to help us in, um, in the films we do, uh, and the educational resources we do. And, um, you know, we're working with 50,000 young people a year, uh, or we were before COVID. Um, it's changed a little bit now, we're moving everything online, but our face-to-face -face delivery uh, was 50,000 a year um, before COVID, and um, we're educating 6,000 adults. We're now doing a lot more work online, training adults who are currently training 2,500 people in a program, a six-hour program we're doing, but we'll undoubtedly be trying to get um, online events with Aberdeen Football Club. I think we're doing an event with Man City and West Ham next uh, week, and we've done South End and QBR. So it's, it, it isn't about one particular level of football. Um, South End United tomorrow will be just as important for fans of that club and young people there as, as, as Man City will be next week. So we believe footballers can have a big influence, in particular, you know, online as well. I mean, we're, I, I totally agree that the problem of social media. It, I've started calling it anti-social media because it's not social media. It's, it's, not, it, it's run by big business who seem to be more interested in, in making billions than they are combating racism in, in Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. The amount of money they have, they should be combating racism in society with us. And I don't think they've helped in, in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, a lot of companies have, but we would like the social media companies to... If they, if they have got instances of racism and they undoubtedly have, work with us and help us combat it. Jed, is, do you believe football's affected more by racism than other sports? Or obviously other sports do other issues as well? I don't at all know. I, mean, I think racism has addressed the issue more. I think other issues, other, I mean, I think other, other, particularly as a result of the Black Lives Matter issue, I, I think this is coming out now, the cricket and rugby and rugby league and rugby union haven't addressed the issue as much as football has. And um, I, I, I think what's very good about the Sky coverage that, we, um, that they've done around Black Lives Matter is you've had key individuals in all the sports, and not just not just the sports I've mentioned, but I think in particular I'd like to highlight Lewis Hamilton, I think has been an incredible role model in, in the Black Lives Matter movement. And, and I think that a lot of sports uh, haven't done as much as football. I, I think football... Um, because it had the big problem in the 70s and 80s, um, and because of the players' union, um, the PFA in Scotland and the PFA here in England, and the players themselves, I have to say, not just the union, but the players themselves, I think football's done more than any other sport. Yeah, and uh, Funso, the, the taking the knee, which has been ad adopted by almost everybody, uh, worldwide almost, is that something that it can be taken as granted? It's just going to happen. It must actually mean something, mustn't it? Yeah, I think we're all, we're getting to that point where is it's just being done. So the the biggest thing is that we we can't lose the message what's behind it. So we, we're doing it for a purpose, and um, we, we we can't forget that purpose. So. 
we need to still like around all the games if it's football or formula one with with lewis hamilton still be addressing what we're doing it for what he's doing it for and so the message doesn't just go away jed do you believe it's a, a generational thing you touched on it in your introduction that it was better and then it's turned the corner again is is there key reasons for that I don't believe it's a generational thing. I, um, I don't believe it's a class thing. Um, I, I believe it's a problem that society hasn't, hasn't addressed and um, certain politicians um, have made it a lot worse. And, and I'm not blaming one particular political party, but obviously you have the far right, the UK party, you've had the Brexit campaign and the Brexit campaign and Farage, it was about blaming immigrants, you know, beneath the surface. And yet, as I said at the beginning, um, I live in the northeast of England, Newcastle, and um, we have the lowest population of, of migrants here, um, and of anywhere in the UK. And yet, we have the highest unemployment uh, um, in the UK. So the idea that migrants create unemployment is absolute nonsense. Um, you know, migrants do not create any unemployment. If they did, we would have the highest, uh, the lowest unemployment because we have the the, the high the, the the lowest number of migrants. And I think. It's been society that hasn't addressed the problem, um, and and that's why I think we've had a growth of risk. And particularly uh, when we've when we've started going back to the days. I mean, uh, you know, you talk to players of of, um, of the Windrush generation. There are no blacks, no Irish, no dog signs. They used to go in the windows. Um, I never thought we'd go back to that blaming immigrants, but we did, and it, and it happened about probably about 12, 15 years ago. Um, and, it, and it's been non-stop since, and I, and I think it's one of the reasons, along with Islamophobia. Well, as we said at the top of the, of the event, we want to look forward rather than back. So, Funso, what can players, fans do more to work together to address this problem? Um, to work together. I think if, if this is for the fans in the stadium, like if you're next to someone or you see someone saying something or throwing something on the pitch that has to do with racism, just um, point it out, say something to the person. Um, that's not only in football, it's even on the street. If you see something, just walk up to the person and say, no, that's, that's wrong. Um, report it. We, as players as well, like there's always that, that little football banter that's going on and some of the jokes are a, a, a bit racist and I feel like we need to get that out of football as well as, as players because um, it's, it's been that football banter for so long that we as players, we see it as normal. But I, I don't see it as that. I don't feel like it's not because you've done it for 20, 30 years that it's normal. No, it's still a bad thing. It's still wrong. So we need to get that out. And if it happens in the game as well as players, you need to stick together as a team, as a club. And I think you need to just walk off. Not even, uh, obviously, tell the referee. The referee has to do something. He needs to stop the game. Because if you take the game away from the fans, the fans are spending a lot of money on season tickets. They come to the stadium for football, not to yell something at anyone. So if you take the game away from them, I think they're going to think twice about it. And, and I think with all that's happening now, um, the other fans in the stadium would also back the players up who walk off the pitch. I think a couple of years ago, maybe longer, the fans wouldn't have appreciated it. There's, there's plenty of cases where players like a Balotelli walked off and then the next day you see in the press that he shouldn't have done it. Um, I think if it happens now, a player, a player and his team would be applauded and, and that's a good thing. So we're, moving, we're definitely moving forward in, in society and, and everything around football and on the pitch as well. Jed, as Funso touched on, we, we have seen it in other parts of the, the world, teams walking off, etc. As far as Scotland's concerned, would it take something like that to really make an instant difference? Um, I think walking off is the last resort, isn't it? Um, um, I think Funzo's 
absolutely right to highlight it. If if, um, if there's racism in the stands, it, it um, and it it's a way of the players acting. I think that the best action I've ever seen was 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 when England played abroad and they were getting the racism in Gareth Southgate just one year ago. This week actually took the players off. Uh, that didn't happen out of accident. Gareth um, Southgate is is being involved in anti racism. Um, for 25 years, he's, he's a great patron of our campaign. Him and Chris Powell have discussed it with the players, and the players have decided what they want to do. So it's a last resort. Uh, to me, um, the best thing players can do is exactly what Funzo's doing today get involved in education. Um, take the knee, absolutely, but get involved in programs where you can change young people's attitudes, like show racism and the red card. Um, and that will have a longer term impact. Um, also work with the fans groups. You know, there's some incredible fans groups. Um, we started a tourist red card with with Jordy's R Black and White. That's that's how we started one fans group um, that was involved with Kevin Keegan and um, when he was a player. So um, and before that, with Jack Charlton as is the manager. So you start with with one or two people, and um, you can build incredible campaigns if you have the players on board and the role models on board. And I, and I do think. Um, Challenging the the educate doing the education and challenging racism is more important than, than walking off the pitch. Having, having said that, I think taking the knee and walking off the pitch, if, if it's done in the right way in a positive way, can be incredibly powerful. Certainly, from an Aberdeen perspective, and so you know, the, if awareness in communities and schools, etc., the players would be one hundred percent behind initiatives like that. Mm -hmm. I will. I would like to come back to what Chet said. Like. Education is, is, I'm totally agreeing with that. Education is, is totally the key, but I feel um, what I said is more of a reaction if it happens. Um, the ed education is more, I feel like that's a, a long, longer term plan because that happens with younger children. The 30, 40, 50 year olds who are already made their mind up, they are going to be harder to change their minds um with the younger kids they they've been taught racism to religions or being homophobic being, being racist to colors so you can still change that around around because they've been taught but the older generation uh, with some i feel like it's it's already too late not with all i, I have an example in my family the niece of my mom she posted a lot of stuff on Facebook and I, I didn't know it. We have a, a holiday in December um, called Sinterklaas and, and Black Pete and white people would um, do blackface. And we're trying to get rid of it. And there's, there's a lot of people who say like, if you don't like it, just go back to where you came from. So I rang up my mom and I said like, what's this about? So Am I, am I not just born in Belgium? Like, is, is, is she forgetting something? So she had a conversation with her and she was able to change her mind. But I think that's one of the, of, of the few people because they know someone where you're able to. I, I totally agree with that, actually, Funzo. The, the, uh, what I wasn't saying is education alone. Sometimes you need arrests. You need to arrest people who are racist. Because it's against the law, um, mm -hmm. if if it's a racist attack, then they, you know people should be aware that they're going to go to prison for it. Um, and so we build up over the course of the last twenty five years in this country um, a legal precedent where after the Stephen Lawrence murder, where people will go to prison for for uh, for racism and racist attacks in the workplace. You can be dismissed as you can, as you can you know as a footballer. Um, and of course, there are there are bans um, for fans. There are lifetime bans if, if it's persistent racism. So, well, sure, some red card would support all that. Um, but I, if you ever listen to a guy called John Bonds, who um, who's one of one of the greatest players ever to play for um, Liverpool in England, um, and, a, and a fabulous supporter of sure some red card, he says that if that's all you do, then you don't really change the hearts and minds of, of the people uh, who are racist. And we we I'm a firm believer you can't change people. We, we've, we have players uh, in Scotland who go into prison and work with racial offenders. Some of them are sectarian offenders. Um, Derek Ferguson, who used to play for Rangers, 
um, and the impact he's had on on uh, as it on Celtic fans and Rangers fans who have been done for sectarianism and in prison for it is incredible. So you, we we would say you can change people's attitudes, but what I wasn't saying is players can't leave the pitch. They can certainly they should take the knee, but I think it. Um, uh, now is the time for, for like a rounded out programme of, of how we change attitudes and the world's a much smaller place now because of COVID and I think um, you know Black Lives Matter has made it a, a smaller place as well so we, we, we're in a good position now to change attitudes And so um, Ross who's attending makes the point that, that you, you made uh, it seems that taking a knee pre-game has become a bit of a hollow gesture how do we take that forward as a more tangible action? See, that's what, what I addressed um, um, in the previous question. I, I feel the same way that we're going towards that. We're not there yet, but how do we take that away? So still keep, um, I think what Jed said, Sky is doing a lot before the game. So if our games get broadcasted, still bring it up before the games, halftime, um, after the games. Um, uh, wear the the the, sh the shirts. Obviously, people see that. Um, I have a point about that, Chad. I think we can make the shirts better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a talk afterwards. And... <laughs> Good. But yeah, I I understand what what Ross is is saying. Um, it's a good point. I I don't have a clear answer on that. I, I, this is this is my opinion. Keep addressing it. But still keep doing it. Don't just all of a sudden stop it. Even if it's if it's nine players are, or, who are at a point where they say like I don't want to do it anymore, then let the two players who still want to do it let them do it. Okay, I'd like to hand back to Jed now to talk about show racism, the red card campaign, and charity work, and provide a wee insight into its main aim, what it's achieved to date, and its ongoing mission. Jed. Uh, so, Shuris and Red Card um, was established in 1996 um, and a lot of people think because they've heard of the name that we were established with a large amount of money and um, a lot of government support. In, in reality, we started with one football player, um, Shaka Hislop, who was Newcastle United's goalkeeper. Um, and Shaka um, had suffered racial abuse outside St James's Park. It, he, he was playing in 1996 and... Um, he was, but actually he was filling up his car with petrol and as he filled up his car with petrol a group of young boys, four young boys who were th teenagers um, hurled racial abuse at him um, and he turned around to see who they were to see, see if they were going to threaten him um, and attack him they recognised him as Shaka Hislop and um, they ran over the road to try and get his autograph um, now that, that story is why we were founded because Shatter got involved in the campaign, he wanted to do something, but also sums up what we're about. What we believe those young people's attitudes were obviously wrong and, and um, totally ab abhorrent, but um, you can change those attitudes, and, and that's what we're all about. We're about changing attitudes in society. Um, that was 1996. We, we started with that one football player. Um, we started in Scotland in 97 uh, with the help of Tony Higgins and the, and the PFA. Um, we've had incredible support of players, um, past and present, and managers like Craig Brown. Um, but we're about working in schools. The, the probably 80% of our work is in the schools themselves. Um, we produce films, we produce uh, educational resources um, that go along with the films. Um, we, the films have changed over the years. We uh, have got a new film um, on challenging racism in the NHS at the moment, but that was being produced during. Um, COVID, um, where we interviewed nurses um, who were uh, Muslim nurses who were getting uh, patients saying, "Don't, I oh, don't you touching me," um, uh, be, uh, because of your hijab. Um, and that that film addresses some of the issues about racism in society and institutionalised racism. And we've done a new film on Black Lives Matter as well. I I think um, we've we've had a difficult period as anti-racists. It's, racism is on the rise in Scotland. It's on the rise throughout Europe. We have a president of the United States uh, and Donald Trump who's openly racist. He, he is running an election campaign um, trying to blame 
uh, trying to build a wall, trying to build barriers against uh, Mexicans and against anybody who's seen as foreign. And yet America was founded uh, on the basis of immigration. So if Americans can start blaming, blaming immigrants, anybody can. Um, but we've got a world that's quite dangerous at the moment, the far right on the rise. Um, and sure it's my card believe that um, we have to redouble our efforts. Um, and, I, and we're very, very happy that the Black Lives Matter movement happened. It, it's very sad that it had to take the, the horrific murder of George Floyd um, that was seen by, by billions throughout the world. Um, eight minutes, 45 seconds of a policeman on his neck. Um, and I'm saying he couldn't breathe. But we are in a better position now to change attitudes. We've had a lot of support of the public in Scotland, a lot of support of companies and football clubs and players. Um, and now's the time really to step up our efforts to change attitudes in society. And, and that's where we will be. We will, we will work with young people, we'll work with adults. We've got massive support in the trade unions in Scotland, great support of the local authorities. And the Scottish Government are good friends of ours as well. So, we need more support of the Scottish Government. I have to say that, that we are funded just to work in education. We think we should be funded to work in football. I mean, it, it's our funding uh, was originally to work in football, but now it's just for education. We believe we need money to work within the game. Um, we get a lot of, of free support of football clubs, but we need support um, of the government in terms of educating not just uh, young people, but adults in the game as well, and, and stewards and and building a real strong message within the game. So that's where, where Shuris and Red Card are. We, we are always positive that we can make a change, but that certainly um, now is the time after Black Lives Matter to make a bigger difference. And Fortnite for Action, a lot happening. You're very busy at the moment. We're Red Day tomorrow, um, so hoping everybody in Scotland will wear, wear red with us. Um, got an incredible number of, of health workers doing that, and it, it's so humbling, isn't it, when... Um, you know, in the middle of this pandemic where um, health workers have, have put, and key workers as well, not just the, the NHS workers, but key workers have gone out there and put their lives on the line. To see so many of them key workers will be backing us tomorrow by wearing red. We've got incredible support of hospital trusts, of the rail workers and, and other um, key workers and um, working in care homes, working throughout Scotland. Uh, in different industries and um, where Red Day is going to be massive and then of course yeah the fortnight of action where we bring that message into football um, we've got t-shirts uh, Funzo says we need to improve them we're certainly always looking to improve the anti-racist message and in, in, in the work we do um, but more seriously we, we we know that Sky are going to be wearing our badges and, and pushing the message tomorrow we want all the broadcasting companies um, behind us and all the football clubs helping us the message is a simple one of being opposed to racism, but it's needed more than ever before. There's an anonymous attendee, Jed, taking you a bit to task. Do you feel, really feel walking off should be the last resort if players are facing repeated racism? Also, as a black man, I do not feel it's fair to put the education burden on players. Do you th think show racism, the red card, has done enough to directly support black players when they're facing abuse? I wasn't saying black, uh, black players or anybody shouldn't leave the pitch. At, um, and if there is persistent abuse, I've actually said that they, uh, they're quite within their rights to do it. Um, and, I, and, I, and I highlighted the England team as being a, a model of good practice. Um, certainly, we would take the lead from the players themselves. Um, and, and I absolutely was not saying that it's only black players that should be involved in education. If you look at our record, um, I've mentioned Derek Ferguson in Scotland, but if you look at our record, we think it's well, I'm, you may have noticed I'm a white person. It's very, very important that white people fight racism and it's not left to black people. It, it's much more, um, what, you know, the ideas of racism are much more directed at white people. Um, and if we go back to our campaign, um, one of the lessons we learned very early on, Shaka was the first patron. The second one was John Beresford, England fullback at the time, played for the best team in the world, Newcastle United. Um, and but more seriously, he admitted to being a teenage racist. He admitted to doing monkey chants. And he said he'd been telling uh, racist jokes even that week in the dressing room. And it wasn't until he'd, he'd heard Shaka talk about the issue and heard Les Ferdinand and other black players that he changed his attitude. So we're all about changing attitudes. Um, I think people would be quite surprised by the lack of support we have. Um, people always tell us we should do more in the game of football. We'll do more in football 
if we had the money to do it. But we have uh, very little funding. Um, public money comes into us, but, but from the, th um, the Scottish government and the football authorities, we have very little money. Where we do have the support is of clubs like Aberdeen, the football clubs themselves, who will give us the players and give us access to the clubs. The best thing we do as, a, as an organisation is the educational events at the clubs themselves with the players. Now, they're currently on hold, but we're going to move them online and we, we really think we're going to have a big impact online with young people as well. Funso, I think Jed's covered a wee bit of this. How, how can we reach young people through football and help address racism? Not through schools, but through community action, sports clubs, etc. Uh, just to attend, um, go see him in person. Um, don't make it like, um, that's how I feel, don't make it like they're in, in school, but um, maybe train, train with them if, if it's a football club, train with them and then see how they behave, um, say if they, if, if they behave in a certain way, um, point it out and um, yeah, just do it on the pitch while playing. Um, I think the most I've learned as, as a young boy was whilst doing it playfully, not while I had to sit behind a desk and someone was um, writing stuff on the board. Um, most of the, the, the young kids just forget um, the stuff that's being said. So if it's in a fun way, even if it's not a fun topic, um, I think it will come across better. And the point I, I was making uh, earlier, Funso, that, that uh, the whole of the squad at Aberdeen Football Club would be more than happy to get involved in initiatives such as that. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, it's also a case of, of, of having to because you don't want to lose face. But maybe if some don't feel comfortable enough to, to go on the forefront and being in the picture, they would still... Um, back let's say for me for instance if I'm a vocal about it they wouldn't do the same thing but they would back me up and say like are oh, you doing a good job um, and that that's a nice feeling that you're in a team and in a club um, who supports you. Hey, Jed quite a long, long one here but I'll read it out because it's, it's very important points made from Dan McKendrick and um, my question is as we move down the levels towards grassroots, how do we ensure the message has the same impact? At the professional level, there is much more scrutiny and ability to control. However, as you move lower, it becomes just much more difficult. Aberdeen University's amateur team just last year walked off the park in protest. Whilst many were supportive, there was also a negative response on unsocial media, and the player who made the remark was then found not guilty due to lack of evidence and during the trial I actually felt that the university players were the ones on trial. I would also add that that, that team won team of the year at the Sport Aberdeen Awards at that particular year but uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that case Jed but uh, it was did get a lot of publicity up here. I, I think Scotland can learn a, a lot from what's, what, what's happened here in England so that um, not only do we have here in England tourists and the red card but we also have uh, kick it out uh, which was kick racism out of football. And, um, you know, that role in Scotland uh, um, of training the grassroots, of working in the grassroots, of working with referees, of working with officials, of working with stewards, falls on show us some red card. But we, we have a staff team uh, of, of three uh, education uh, people who work throughout the whole of, of Scotland. So we, it, we don't have the funding that the Premier League and, um, and the... the, the Football and authorities give kick it out here in England. Um, they have a much bigger team, they have a much bigger budget, and therefore they're able to cover a lot more. So um, we will always help wherever we can, give advice. Uh, we have trained stewards in Scotland, but it's not on the same level, as I said, that we would like. Um, and I think, undoubtedly, at the grassroots level, you get much more to where, where society's problems are. Um, particularly all seat at Stadia has seen uh, the decline in racism. I'm not sure that's always because um, people aren't racist. I think it's more to do with them. If they can be easily identified, they can lose their season tickets, they can get a five-year ban, they can get a lifetime ban. So you're not preventing the racism there, you're just shutting it up. Um, and whereas at grassroots level, um, it's more likely to happen. So I do agree with
the points made. Um, I think that we, we need more support at Tourist Med Card so we can do more. We would like to do more. It, it, it literally is down to a, a small team of workers who are stretched in, in what they can do because of the finances. One for you. Funso, how can we best support anti-racist efforts? As a Dons fan, how can I encourage the club to be more explicit in terms of it's not enough now to be not racist, we have to be actively anti-racist, which I think is a sentiment we would all agree with. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think um, the way to social media is the easiest to reach the club. Um, if, um, say, show racism, the red car, um, they're wearing red, red t-shirts tomorrow or wearing red tomorrow, if, if you go out and wear red, post the tag Aberdeen, um, hashtag um, show racism in the red car, that gets out. Even if you only have 20 followers, if you have five followers, if it reaches five people, maybe they pick up and it, it gets spread, they tag Aberdeen and that, uh, through that way, Aberdeen is gonna see and feel like oh it means something to the Aberdonians it means something to people so we are gonna have to act on it as well if uh, if everyone just stay quiet there's no reason for Aberdeen or a big conglomerate like a big business to act up on it if 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 a big business makes its money while staying quiet on it they're just gonna um, keep going the way they were going so you need to be vocal through social media um, posts, tag, so the message gets to them and the more people who will be doing that, the easier um, it will pop up with those businesses and my club as well. Here's one I think you'll like, Jed. Uh, do you feel show racism red card could have an impact on increasing diversity in the management, coaching and boardroom level in football? We would love to think we could, but um, it, it's certainly something I think the Scottish government could look at with the Scottish FA and the Scottish um, football and authorities. I know it's something that the uh, Scottish PFA are, are keen to push. Um, the, it, it's exactly the same here in England. I mean, we, you know, we've we've had um, year on year of you know twenty or thirty years of black players being um, key in the game. You know, twenty five percent of players now for the last uh, ten years and more. Um, and then you count on one hand the number of black players who, who get a job. Um, and, you know, I mentioned John Barnes before. John, um, you know, got a couple of jobs, but he, he wasn't given the time either at Celtic or, uh, or anywhere else, even at Tramia Rovers. Um, Chris Eaton, who, um, incredible record in Newcastle United, incredible record at Brighton. Uh, and then out of work for a year, luckily, luckily Chris is now back at uh, Nottingham Forest. But I don't believe a white manager who promoted two teams to the uh, Premier League uh, in the last 10 years would have been out of work for a year. It's, I do think racism, institutionalised racism exists in the workplace. Um, so you can see that black people aren't represented. With the NHS film we did clearly demonstrated that uh, black nurses are not getting the opportunities at senior levels, that black people are not getting the opportunities at senior levels in the health service. And that's reflected in, in Scottish society. It's reflected in society here in England. So, yeah, we need more uh, diversity. Uh, you know, uh, we're very proud of Tourism Red Card. 42% of our staff are from a black, Asian and minority ethnic background. And what that means is we, you know, we've got a team that understands race some more. We've got a team that um, gets, you know, gets, I think, gets more out of it. And I think a lot of football clubs have that as well. I mean, I, um, sorry, uh, but I'm not a big uh, Aberdeen fan, but what, what's it what's it like in your dressing room? What's it what's it like in terms of, for example, religion? Do you have other religions? Do you have a, what's the um, what's the makeup we like? Have, we have no um, Muslims in my team. That's actually a first in like twelve years of football, professional football. That I didn't have any Muslims here, but I think that's more of Scotland. Um, and then you have Shay Logan who is um, half Jamaican, half English. Me, half Belgium, half Nigerian. Then I think you have Catholics and Protestants and, and atheists. That's it. 
in terms of your football career, one of the big issues has always been Islamophobia. What what's your view with that? That you know this this constant. I mean, we do a survey of young people, and you wouldn't believe if we the negativity towards the Muslim religion in this country has just grown. And in Scotland's grown year on year. What's your view when you've had, when you've played with Muslim players and about uh, that religion? Uh, see, I've um, in in Belgium we have a lot more Muslims than. Um, you have here, so I've I've grew, grown up around um, a lot of Muslims, Moroccans, Turkish. Um, so I'm not really used to it because most of the time, um, the ma majority of my team was Muslim. So if anyone was being maybe bullied, it was the people who weren't Muslim. So um, yeah, I've. I don't know how it is here. I've, I've, I've not heard any jokes about Muslim in my team or the teams I've been in England. So that's, I think that's a good thing. Um, but I, I definitely see what you mean with it rising um, all over and um, Muslims being blamed for a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, but as I said, like I've, I've seen it from, uh, from when I was a young boy. And I feel it's in where I'm from, it's being shifted now to more like the Eastern Europe, Europeans, um, because they, they are coming, migrating to Belgium and trying to get work. So the blame is being shifted to them now. I, I totally agree. That's something that's, I haven't mentioned that yet, but that's it. When I mentioned migrants, Eastern European, you don't have to have a black skin to get racism. Um, no. You know, the, the migrants, particularly, um, you know, these new European migrants are, are, are subject to a lot of racism at the moment in Scotland and in, in, uh, in England. And so one for you. In the future, do you see yourself as a football manager and a black role model? Well, I would argue you're already a role model, but management, is that something for you? Um, it's, it's difficult. Um, I, I spoke to... Um, to main about it today and Tommy Holborn that I have weeks where I think like I feel like I could do a lot as a manager um, in case of like education off the pitch also on the pitch and then some weeks I'm like no when I'm done with football I want to be done but um, I do feel like there's there's a movement going on and there's uh, there's people who are actually looking at the best qualified people in the future to be head of of companies or be the head of a club or, or in the boardroom so I do feel like if there's something for me in football I think when I'm about to be done playing football this is the time I think I actually have a shot now which I didn't feel like that 10 years ago, if you would ask me 10 years ago, do you think you would ever be like a uh, managing director or technical director in a club? I would say no way. There's no way they're going to appoint a black guy. Uh, I think when I'm done playing football, there's actually a chance. If I'm the best qualified for it, I think there's a chance I could be that one. Okay, that's a, the point you were making about Chris Hutton, if he a white manager had the successes that Chris had had, he wouldn't have been out for a job, out of a job for a year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it isn't just, you know, it isn't just Chris Eaton. We've, we've got a number of our, our black players. Uh, Gary Bennett, who's um, a former Sunderland captain, who uh, is one of our head coaches, is, um, tells the story when he was manager at Darlington of um, trying to get into the executive lounge afterwards and the, and the doorman not letting him in. Um, and he was trying to say, explain, well, I'm the manager of the team, and he was like, no, no, you can't come in here. This is this is for, you know. So we, we know that kind of racism, institutionalised racism, um, is a big a big problem, not only in football, but in our society as a whole. And um, it, it's something the Black Lives Matter movement has given us an opportunity. I mean, as I said, that we've never had as many companies coming towards us, uh, tourists and red card, and we're heartened it. The amount of training we're now doing with companies has grown exponentially. Partly because of the the, the lockdown and the um, moving things online, but also because of, of the the movement itself that, that's happened in, um, since the murder of George Floyd. 
Fred, you mentioned Kick It Out. Are there any Scottish initiatives that uh, people can get involved in and support? Certainly, Show Us My Carter um, or the organisation that uh, in Scotland that, that do run the, the campaign. And um, I would hope that, um, you know, um, you, you could get in touch with us and we would know the local campaigns to get in touch with. We work with, with any organisation fighting racism or indeed supporting refugees, supporting asylum seekers, or, you know, it, doing any good work in terms of uh, the community. So get in touch with Show Us My Card if you do want to fight racism in, in Aberdeen or indeed, uh, you know, do want to do any work around a uh, campaign against racism. And if we can't help you directly, um, there are a lot of organisations. We, we, we're working with Stand Up To Racism, um, who have a lot of local groups who have been very involved in the Black Lives Matter movement. We don't see ourselves really as, as a volunteering organisation. We, at the moment, have got concentrate on education, but certainly they have a lot of volunteers. Um, in the past, the racial equality councils have been superb, but a lot of them, unfortunately, have, have been closed down. So, yeah, get in touch with us and we, we'll find out who the best group to, to do that is. Um, and certainly the, the Students Union in Aberdeen um, and, and the... Uh, have been good supporters of ours in the past, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of other people in Aberdeen and fans groups who can help you. Yeah. So, in terms of Aberdeen's support, thankfully there hasn't been any inc racism incidents for, for a while, but Shea Logan, you mentioned earlier, the club 100% backed Shea when he had a couple of problems with racist chants and racist yeah. comments made by a, an opposition player. Yeah, um, you know, it was funny, like the, the, the way you say it, it's almost like it's surprising that your employer um, backs you up in an injustice case where it's, it's, it's as Jed said, it's a crime to make racist remarks. So it's only normal if there's been a racist, racist remark and it wasn't only Shay who heard it, there was witnesses that the club backs him up. It's, it's only normal, I think. Um, if if a club wouldn't back his player up, the player wouldn't want to play for that club anymore, right? That I think it's in a football club, it's in a business. Um, so uh, I just wanted to point that out that I, I, I think it's funny that we say like, oh, the club backed him up. No, it, I feel like it's normal and that should be the new normal as well. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't happen anymore to Shay. I'd, I'd, you know Shay longer than me. Well, I've known him for a year and a half now, and he's he's a he's a strange cat. Like I don't think he's too bothered in the in the comments he gets. Um, in, in this instance, he spoke about out about it, but um, he could say so much more. And I personally think he maybe should, so people know like, oh, it, it is there. But um, on the other side, I get why he doesn't want to bring up everything because otherwise um, you link Shay Logan to that and then he gets reminded of as, as the guy, oh, he always gets those messages and then he's in the news. Um, instead of the, his football talents, he's in the news all the time for being racially abused. So I get both sides. Um, I only think like if it was me, I would... Um, be vocal about it and um, just put the spotlight on the people who who ab abuse you definitely you had mentioned uh, Black Lives Matter 2020 has been such a strange strange year and will continue to be for, for some time yet moving forward we obviously have to keep fighting the fight we can't give up but do you think 2020 there might be, be some sort of silver lining in that it might be a year when things actually do make a, a proper sizable shift yeah i mean I, I i've certainly noticed the um big big increase in, in the amount of people support insurance my card for example we've never had as much public support um and it'll be shown tomorrow when we're red there you know we last year seventy-seven thousand people were wearing red throughout the uk this year it'll be um, far more than that and where the uh, the effect that we're having um as i say from from different companies asda have come on board dr martins have come on board um so we're, we're getting uh, key 
companies and key individuals back in the campaign. But um, what what's heartened me is uh, that it that it's a worldwide you know movement, um, and that you know some of the actions that have been taken, the American uh, sports stars, um, the actions where they, they've left the pitch and um, the you know the actions of the of all the different groups in, in terms of not just just one aspect of, of uh, society but all society coming together and also the amount of young people involved in this campaign is I've never you know it, it's probably the biggest movement um, in my lifetime of, of young people um, you know it, the obviously you had the civil rights movement uh, that was and, and the anti-apartheid movement um, I'm old enough to be involved in the anti-apartheid movement but um, it never reached the kind of numbers and yet it had a huge influence in our society. So yes, we need to see change though. Um, you know, we, we, it can't just be um, that, that it's uh, taking the knee and nothing else. It has to, we have to see change. Um, and I'm, I'm confident though that the people are speaking out that, you know, the, um, the, the likes of Stormzy, the, the real influence on young people are, are now coming and speaking. And, you know, the, if you look at um, Raheem Sterling, for example, in England, Raheem's played a fantastic role along with Gareth Southgate um, in actually speaking out on the issue. We, you know, it was left to Shuris Mike Card to speak on the issue for many, many years, but now players are coming to us. And that's where we want to be. We want to be in the position where players are coming to Shuris Mike Card wanting to get involved, um, not us knocking on the doors trying to get them out and involved. They're, they're coming to us now and getting involved. And we need um, the role models in every club. So, yeah, we are. Confident things can change, um, but yeah, they need to change as well. And so, as Jez saying, that the time for talking is long since over. Time now for action. Time for action. Time for nice t shirts from show racing. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I meant with that is if you look at the NBA, they um, often wear kids, obviously, it's a different financial. Um, institution but they were kids um from different causes and you look at it and you're like that's cool i want to wear that i want to have that and um i think if we do that in football as well team up with the nike and adidas and under armor and get that kid out it if you make it cool it it it's get spread out more people talk about it and that's that's what you that what you want in and that it, it stays relevant that people talk about it and you sell some t-shirts as well so you get more funding so that's a really, taking... a really good idea and um we uh if nike or adidas are listening uh or indeed lewis hamilton we we need uh more people like that involved in the in the campaign we we've had a as i say a big influx in other organizations um we're hoping with Dr. Martin Boots, for example. I mean, the Dr. Martin Boot image is quite an image, a one, very similar. Because um, uh, we, we've had, I, I don't know if you know the, the history, uh, Funzo, of Dr. Martin Boots. Do you, have, you, have you heard of Dr. Martin Boots? I got married in uh, Dr. Martin Boots last week. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, 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 if you talk to black people of my age, uh, and I, I'm 58, um, then Dr. Martin Boots, the red ones, are synonymous with skinheads and they're synonymous with the National Front. Um, yeah. And the number of black people who would, who would say that they, when they were young, people, they would be terrified of people wearing those boots. And yet that company now has turned itself absolutely around from being, a t you, know, a, you know, where the far right are and where the far right were, were um, owning them to rejecting racism and really making a strong stand. And, um, you know, it, it's similar to... Um, uh, other brands need need to where the far right have adopted them, and, the, and this is happening in America at the moment with the Proud Boys. Um, yeah. Then that brand needs to make a strong stand against against those people and, um, and and stand out against them because the far right are using racism throughout the the uh, the world. Um, uh, uh, is of Am's block still existing in Belgium? It's a long time since I've, I've, I did an anti-racist demo in Belgium, but I did one in in about. Of block, yeah. yeah. They changed the name to Vlaams Belang, and actually they um, they won the election. Um, the last election they won, they got the most votes. Um, right. But Belgium, Belgium is a strange country, so they won the election, but they're not running the country. It's weird. 
I was on an anti-racist demonstration against Vans Block in, in, in Brussels many years ago. Um, it was, and it was uh, a successful one, but it, it's, it's, are they an anti-immigration party then? Yes, they are. They just want to... The sad the state of the Europe's getting itself into where the people have built our countries. Um, you know, I, Aberdeen, Aberdeen would never be, it never exist without immigrants, you know. Um, Jody's a go has gone all over the world like Scots have to get work. To start blaming people who come to your company is, is a disgrace. And yet these people are, are getting away with it now. They are, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure Jed, that Foons will be available as a design consultant on a freelance basis <laughs> once he's hung up his boots. <laughs> so, um, sounds like you do a good job. Absolutely. Well, I'm afraid we have run out of time. A few thanks to mention, first of all, everybody who attended tonight, of course. Also, Grampian Regional Equality Council for local initiatives, University for organising the event, in particular the events team and media services, and of course, our speakers, Jed Grebe and Funso King Ojo. Full details of other Black History Month events throughout the month can be found on abdn.ac.uk forward slash events forward slash bhm. Remember, tomorrow is We're Red Day. Stay safe. Good night. Bye-bye.